Hello everyone, I'm Arifin, I'm from Bangladesh, and welcome to Colorful Yunnan. Quite a few times, and one of the places was this little cluster of houses. Hello everyone. <laughs> I'm Arifin Islam from Bangladesh. I'm a member of Generation Z. You know, there are a total of 56 ethnic groups in China and 52 of them are found in Yunnan. These ethnic groups live together and their cultures and handicrafts are all well preserved here. Today, I will show you the charm of the intangible cultural heritage in Yunnan. Wu Tong Zhou Yin, or silver inlaid black copper, listed among the third batch of China's national level intangible cultural heritage, is a form of unique metal craftsmanship pioneered in Yunnan. Wutong Zhongyin is one of the most famous handicrafts in Yunnan. Today I'm going to gift myself by Wutong Zhongyin. Let's go! The name Wutong Zhongyin seems confusing at first, but it's literally composed of two of the most important parts of this type of craftsmanship. Wutong means the black copper, which is made from various noble metals. Zhou Yin emphasizes the most complicated yet delicate step. The craftsman uses black copper as the rough cast, engraves it with decorative designs, and then inlays melted pure silver into the grooves. The silver will flow slowly along the engravings until the molten metal outlines the design. There are over 10 steps in the entire process. Today, I can only see the engraving. Master Zhang is obviously a master of the craft. I'd like to make myself a bookmark, so I asked him to get ready. This is what we finished. Now it's kind of almost ready. Okay, just only the black doors, right? Okay. This one's the most fun part because I'm loving it. And this looks interesting. It needs a lot of concentration because if you don't put in the dots, the things will look pretty bad. I had a pain that day when I did it, but now it's kind of okay, and because I enjoyed it. Yes, I think it's done. I thought everything was done, but there are several more steps to go. Okay, now I write my country name. I'm carefully engraving the letters on it. Now I'm only one step away from finishing. Now it's been ready. Ah, okay. Thank you, Lashi. Appreciate it. So this is the bookmark I made today. It's half done, it's not full complete. So now I'm going to find a perfect decoration for it. So now I'm going inside to find a perfect decoration for my bookmark. Let's go. Wei Qi, a strategy game for two players originated in China over 4,000 years ago. Qin, Qi, Shu, Hua, which means Gu Qin, Wei Qi, calligraphy and painting are the so-called four refined tastes 
which exemplify the literati culture of China. Yunzi is the short name for the Wei Qi pieces made in Yunnan. In the Ming and Qing dynasties, they were presented to the imperial court as a tribute. These are the Yunzi chess pieces, and actually, these pieces are hundreds of years old. They are regarded as an exquisite collectible to this day. These are the stones and the mines that used to make the Yunzi. So you can see the various colorful stones and mines are here. Uh, from these stones and mines, first we get the colorful uh, powders, and after the powders, we melt it to make it liquid. From the liquid, we make the Yunzi finally. The kiln temperature of more than 1,000 degrees is maintained for 24 hours, while the colorful raw materials are smelted by a secret formula into a thick liquid. Here comes the most challenging part of making yunzi. Master Liu is dipping, dripping, and collating all in one smooth process. The master can say it's easy, but it's pretty difficult for me. You know, the making of Yunzi was, at the time, it was interesting to me and was fun and it was very difficult, you know, because you need to sit in front of the stove, which is 1000 degrees Celsius. Okay, now I'm making the pieces. This is gonna be hard, I think. And it's too hot here. My hands needs to be stable, too stable. Oh, okay. I need to take more liquids. When making the Yunzi from the liquid crystals, you need to be uh, very stable. You need to catch your breath and you need to sit still. Otherwise, you won't get the perfect round shot. When I finished my first Yunzi, it wasn't round at all. I mean, it wasn't even the standard size. It was looking like a baby Yunzi, okay? But after several try, I I make a close to the round side, I mean close to the standard side, but though it, it wasn't as professional as the Laoshi, but I feel amazed. To get a perfect Yunzi, forming the stone is just a start. It must be followed by polishing, cleaning and sorting. <laughs> Now I have to put the pieces in this thing and filter the pieces by shaking this thing like this. Bao taught me to use this instrument to sort the pieces into different sizes. However, bigger is not always better. So as she said, this is the biggest piece. For the size of this piece, you cannot use it into the game because we have other 360 pieces. So if you all put together, there won't be enough spaces. So next thing we need to do to give oil to the pieces to keep these pieces all stable for using longer time. Like a simple gentle body massage. Mm, you see, the colors are changing. It's looking beautiful, right? Mm. 
It takes 361 pieces of the same size and quality to make a complete set of Wei Qi pieces. After making the Yunzi, I also fold it in the light and I saw the color is kind of mixture of green and black color. I mean the color is amazing. You see now my bookmark is finished and this one is very special to me because I write my country name Bangladesh here in it and this is the only one pieces in the world and this this one is co-blended by both Yunzi and Wutong Zongyi. Do you like it? You know, Guangzhou ancient town is famous for Wutong Zongyi and Yunzi. But there is one more intangible cultural heritage that most of the people doesn't know. It's the inner painting of bottom. Let's take you there. Come on. The bottles are viewed from the outside, so they're painted back to front on the inside. Craftsmen put a special brush into a small crystal bottle to make their painting. It's micro-controlled art. Uh, the brush looks thin but is very strong. It can be bent to sketch all kinds of lines inside the bottle. The bottle we use is not transparent. I couldn't even find where the brush was at the start. Ah, I see, I see the brush, oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, it's okay? Yes, yes, okay. Oh my god, it's so hard. <laughs> I also tried to paint inside the bottle, but, but it's kind of hard, you know. My hands need to be stable. If I do anything wrong, a little bit wrong, the whole process is ruined. Then I'll give it a tiger, okay. Yes. The tiger hair I drew seems a little thicker and uneven, but look at his face. He definitely sees himself as the best looking creature here. I also saw uh, many animals like the panda is uh, very beautifully painted because it's the national animal of China, national treasure of China. And the green peacock, which is, can be mainly found in the Yunnan province. And I, I also saw the tiger. It's very much similar to the national animal of my country, Bangladesh, Royal Bengal Tiger. Ms. Sun told me that the inner painting of Yunnan school presents the integration of many of Yunnan's ethnic cultures. Having visited all the prefectures in Yunnan, she developed eco-friendly pigments with locally sourced plants, like roses, to show off the different ethnic cultures in rich colorings. Her work vividly depicts the diversity of Yunnan. Or are beautifully painted inside these bottles. What impressed me most is a Nashi couple. The girl's shawl is surprisingly cool. Because for the Nashi group, it is the girls who carry the sun, moon and stars on their shoulders, as well as working hard and the duty of supporting their families. You know, uh, from this painting I can understand that uh, all the ethnic groups in Yunnan, they embrace each other as if they were the seeds of pomegranate. They live together, and their cultures blend together. And I like this kind of Yunnan. Yunnan. 感受云南非遗文化魅力